There are dozens of different online learning platforms out there, and each has its own strengths and weaknesses. While most platforms have a free trial so you can try before you buy, you often don't know what you're signing up for. Well, today we have the mind behind Alpha Prep which provides study material for Cisco, CompTIA, and Red Hat exams. Alpha Prep is unique as it utilizes AI to help you study and check for your exam readiness. Please welcome Joe Franzen. Welcome to the show. How's it going? It's going great. Thanks very much for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Uh, let's just dive right on in. Do you mind kind of telling everyone a bit about yourself and how you got your start in the industry? Uh, I guess, I mean, just kind of dumb luck, really. Um, and persistence, but um, as you said, my name is Joe Franzen. I started a company called Alpha Prep, and I kind of got into it through a, an untraditional path. I went to a traditional four-year university, kind of got lost along the way, and then went and got a degree at a trade school um, that specialized in computer engineering. And they had a degree <clears throat> there that was actually better than the school I was at before. Um, started that way. And um, got in with a, a large healthcare organization and ended up writing some software for them that was spe specific to network engineering. Um, ended my tenure there with them because of that software. And then I did some contracting work for a software development firm. And we kind of married together. And that's how the Alpha Prep began. They are an actuarial based service and they, they have a a, a very similar software platform that they use now to help people pass their actual aerial exams. And I have the exam software that helps you pass your technical exam. So that's kind of how everything got started. Thanks. That's, that's a, that's a unique and awesome story at the same time. Yeah, it was, it was a fun, it was a fun journey for sure that, um, yeah, a lot of a road bumps and, and, and challenges along the way. We, is it road bumps or speed bumps? I'm always concerned with like the sign. Sometimes it says speed yeah. bumps and road bumps. I don't know which one it is. But. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think it just depends on what part of the world you're in. Yeah, it must be. I'm, I'm in Tucson down just so if you uh, – I'm probably 40 minutes from the, the Mexican border, and the mm -hmm. road speed signs actually say kilometers. It's kind of a trip. It's oh, interesting. Really? Yeah, because I just moved here from Portland, Oregon. Um so that was a new one to me to see, to see things that were in kilometers in the States. I didn't think that existed, but there you go. Yeah, exactly. Well, let's just dive right on into alpha prep and let's talk about some of the unique features that you guys offer over there. Yeah. Uh, that sounds great. Um, really? I mean, the, the biggest differentiator in what we do is our, is our pass IQ. Um, and that's the part of the software suite that actually identifies where your knowledge level is. And then it's going to give you content based upon that information. So you're not going to get questions that are too difficult because that's going to waste your time. You're not going to learn anything and you're not going to get questions that are too easy because that, that wastes your, that waste your time on the other end of things. So we do a really good job of identifying your needs and we slowly ramp you up. And when we monitor that, we can actually tell within a very high degree of certainty over 98%. Uh, chance of when you're going to be ready to go past your particular exam, like your CCNA or CCNP. So we actually have data that's tangible. It says, hey, you can go past. And so that kind of buttresses in to the second reason that we're separated is we have every company <clears throat> has a pass guarantee. Um, and you should ask yourself, how can they guarantee this? How do they know their, how do they know their product is going to be successful for me? And the answer is they don't. So kind of the dirty secret behind most companies that offer solutions with past guarantees is that it's, it's a marketing ploy with some actuarial math that says X amount of people are going to, to, to buy into this past guarantee and ask for a refund because they have no idea if you go take the test and pass it or not. They just, they just, they don't know. They don't know if you, they don't know if you're actually using the software, right? So you can, you can, buy their software, let's say for $200 and then you can never use their software and they won't know it. And then you can say, Hey, I want my money back. Right? So they, they actually can't guarantee anything. They don't know the user software. So there's, that is the difference is we actually have a more intimate relationship with our user base and you have to earn your guarantee. So in order to actually get a pass guarantee from us, you have to get to a pass IQ of seven or higher because we know you actually 
we, we can tell you you're not going to go pass, right? You haven't earned earned the right to get a, a pass guarantee because you haven't got there. So that's a big difference is we have we have a real pass guarantee. We don't have a marketing ploy pass guarantee. So those are the two really big different kind of, you know, metrics that separate us apart from our competition. It's not to say there's not other good products out there. There are, um, but that's that, those are the two biggest. Nice. No, and, and I, I do have to admit that is very unique. I, I don't think I've ever heard of another learning platform that out there. Yeah, I've heard of the past, you know, a lot of companies out there are doing past guarantees, but, you know, to actually follow up with real statistical data and that's more, you know, you're, you're more concerned about the actual users, whether they're truly ready to pass their exams or not. You have actual data to back that up. Now, um, uh, you know, you guys offer a lot of different um, training for different certifications. What are some of the, I know Cisco is like one of your big areas you guys yeah. specialize in yeah. a lot. What are some of the other uh, certification paths that you guys have? Well, we're, we're, we're starting to grow and we're starting to grow out a mile wide. So right now we're, we're Cisco, like I said, is the big one. So CCMP and CCNA. Um, we're getting heavy back into CompTIA. So your basic CompTIA stuff, your Network Plus, your A Plus. Um, and then we're doing the AZ-900 <clears throat> as well. And uh, we actually just launched the Salesforce. Um, so it's kind of interesting from my standpoint is I really, I, you know, I started the company very focused on the CCNA because that was my wheelhouse. And so now to watch it grow into exams that I'm, I'm kind of ignorant, I'm just like, well, I mean, you know, it's like we, we get people <laughs> in to, to help curate our content. Um, but it's interesting because I, you know, it's like I have to have people's help to actually you know, know what they're talking about. I can't be the jack of all trades anymore. Um, but yeah, so those are some of the areas we're, we're branching out into because the model just applies over and over, right? We, we can see exam similar questions and we can apply the same machine learning metrics and the same solutions to actually to, to each user in each vertical. So it's a big, big difference. Now, I get this question all the time where people ask me, what certification should I go after? And my biggest answer is, well, what do you want to do in the IT field? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, do you mind kind of talking a little bit about how IT certifications can help you land that next job in the IT field? Yeah, it's a good, it's an interesting subject. And so I was watching your pre one of your previous podcasts with Track It Pacer. Um, yep. And it, she, she's super cool. I would love to meet her, actually. Hi, hi Track It Pacer. Um, and I apologize for hitting you up on, on uh, Twitter the other day. And uh, you probably thought I was some kind of weirdo, but in, I'm not. It's alpha prep. You can say hi to me. I promise. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I, the one thing um, that I think her and I might differ on, we actually might agree. It's hard to say because you, you guys kind of briefly gl glanced over AI and um, it was kind of like there's nothing to worry about. And that's something I, I, I kind of diff – differ with a lot of people on I'm, I'm more on the Elon Musk side of things with AI and so I think it's something that we need to take into account as we're moving forward and making decisions about our careers um, it's unlike anything we've ever seen and, it, and it's going to start cannibalizing I, I believe verticals that used to be you know fruitful for people um, I was actually reading an article from the Harvard Business Review, and it was j just the other day, and I actually put some notes down, actually, because this, this actually struck me, because I knew we were going to have a conversation, and it listed seven, seven um, disciplines that AI will not be able to automate, and they were, so it was, they were communication, content, context, emotional competence, teaching, connections, and uh, an ethical compass. Interesting. And it's just kind of like it, you could go. It's it's Harvard Business Review, and the title of it is like, you know seven seven things that AI can't automate, something of that nature. So your listeners can go look up this article and read it more in depth if they want to. But the article clearly didn't age well, right? So it, it just for example, one like you know um, content, right? So it, it's it's suggesting certain ways that AI is not going to be able to automate content but, but it's like just look at chat gpt look at mid journey and and image Im image automation so it it is ai is learning so fast that we can't predict what it can or can't automate in, in a healthy way um at least most people can't and so i think just kind of saying we're going to be fine there's always going to be you know jobs mm, 
I, I think you need to be asking what kind of jobs is the marketplace going to shift into. And so one of the things with this article that I did agree with is I think probably the most safe kind of concept, at least in this article, is an ethical, an ethical compass. It was like, okay, you can't, you can't reproduce in AI an ethical compass. And that gets into a really deep conversation, but I, I, I tend to agree with that um, because it's not math based. So, are you familiar with? Uh, do you ever watch Jordan Peterson at all? He's kind no, of like a. I don't think kind of so. A, okay. Um, have you heard of this? Is for math nerds out there a guy named Roger Penrose? I've heard the name, but like not. I haven't really, you know, watched them at all. Okay, so okay, we're just really quick. Roger Penrose is, is famous for a lot of things. He um, worked with Stephen Hawking, I think, on some of his uh, black hole radiation work. But he has something called, uh, he worked with M.C. Escher on some of this, actually. It's called a Penrose pattern. So M.C. Escher being the famous uh, artist that has, like, the, the ball in the hand with the mirror, you know, among other different images. Can he has one with the staircase and all kinds of stuff. You'd recognize his pictures, his works, if you saw. I'm it. sure. Yeah. So Penrose came up with this pattern, and it's it's a great, it's it's really symbolic of like what an ethical compass would be, kind of in math. And so it's kind of hard to dovetail this, but it's he found he found two patterns that if you use those perfectly ordered patterns, you can construct them randomly into into perpetuity, and they'll never create a pattern. And it, so it symbolizes this perfect balance between order and chaos. And the reason why Jordan Peterson comes into this is this is kind of – it's symbolic for the way, the way he's trying to suggest we all become morally objective. It's a moral compass. It's a moral compass argument. But it's, it's just a way to pr- – so Penrose has a mathematical proof is that kind of suggests, okay, there's, there's no way that math can tell us how ha- – can predict what's happening in the future in terms of how to be perfectly mor- morally objective. So AI, that's its limit. It's all math-based, right? So if, if it's something that we can mathematically say it can't be calculated, AI is not going to have a leg up in that frontier compared to humans. And so th- that was the category that resonated the most with me. So, so what does that mean? I mean, those are the type of the career fields that I recommend people getting into. So, uh, you know, <laughs> to, to jump ahead into, you know, it, it's certainly going to help an individual to be very nuanced and specific in a career. So this is why certifications all are also a huge, huge help, right? Because like we know AI is coming, it's gonna get more advanced and more advanced. So if you're not in a niche market and your job is easier to automate, that should, I'm not saying you should panic and run for the hills. I, I agree with people on that, but you should at least be considering that. I think we should, be, the right. culture should shift to being like, hey, what, what's five years down the road? What's three years down the road? And so having a, a skill set that is that is more difficult to automate is going to certainly insulate you against the risks that are that are definitely on the horizon with with no regulation. So, um, yeah, that that being said, it's like if you're I mean, my overall recommendation is get certifications. I think I think they're the best, you know, let's call it a stint for now, you know, maybe the next 10 yeah. years. Right. Uh, the, co- the college is um, I, I, I kind of have a lot of. Uh, apathy towards colleges at, at, at this uh, moment was, in time. <laughs> I was going to say, my next question is, what do you think of degrees versus certifications? Yeah, I, I just yeah. don't, I think it's been, I think it's the, the data just bears that out, right? I mean, you, you're going to go into six figure debt to make forty to $50,000 a year at best to start. Um, right. So I, I just, the math is not, it's not a good product, you know, and a certification is, you know, if you're going to have professional help and you and you pay for assistance, maybe a thousand dollars, and right. you're going to, you're going to go into a career field that you probably are going to start out between seventy and eighty thousand dollars, depending on the cert. Let's say your CCNA, and this is something that right now it's it, it, there's a creative domain to it. It's an engineering degree, right? So this is another thing that's that AI is getting there, but it's not there. Um, so. Certainly, it's, you're going to be insulated, and you're going to have almost no debt, and you're going to be starting out out in the workforce like that. You know, you're going to get gobbled up really quick. So, uh, but any sir, I, I think you know, I think CCNA is the standard. I think that's where, out of all the technical certs, right? Um, they're all there's so many good certs, but I think yeah. the CCNA bang for your buck, 
just that's the one. Like if you if if you're on the fence like, trying to decide, that's it. You know, I like to call it a good foundational cert. You know, like when you're building a house, you know, you have to have a good foundation to be able to build your house upon. Otherwise, you know, it'll just fall over. Yeah. You know, that's that's why I think of the CCNA. You know, it's it gives you that that kind of entry level knowledge, and then some. You know, to get you started on the right path. Really, depend, no matter what field you want to go into, there's an argument to be made that the CCNA is for that. You know, that IT field. You know, cybersecurity, you got to know how the network works before you can protect it. Now, obviously, if you want to get into networking, you're going to want this, you know, the network plus. If you want to get into programming and coding, you know, you have to understand how you the, your program um, works with the network. So networking is kind of that one central spoke, and that's one reason I enjoy it so much. It also just uh, lets you branch off so easily, right? Let's, I mean, it's yeah, just like absolutely. it's just a complete plan, and it's actually funny. It's like when you marry, and that, and when I was going to school, they, they would like just combining programming with networking was just kind of a whisper, and uh, it was, and that, that's actually why I was successful at the at the healthcare company I was with is because we married the two together, and I was able to, you know, programmatically read MAC addresses inside of a inside of a Cisco thirty seven fifty, and then we just mapped them out to the wall jacks and architectural maps. And as people would move devices, network devices around the facilities, it would automatically update on a map set and, and staff could see right in real time where they were going. But no one who was a, a networking engineer would have ever imagined that at the time because it just wasn't in the culture. Though like, you know, the programming wasn't a part of the culture. So and now, yeah, nowadays you get that CCNA and you're going to get exposed. They, Cisco has done a really good job at kind of growing out their tentacles. And so you, you start with that foundation and you're going to see all these other worlds. And they can they really do a good job at painting the picture of, hey, these are all the things you can do. Um, and not to mention just the social networking part of it, right? Yeah, so, yeah that's Absolutely. a huge part. You know, um, I, you know, I want to hear your opinion. I did a video a little while ago talking about if the CCNA – is going to go through another major revision. Um, for those of you who don't know, about three years ago, the CCNA was like turned upside down. They completely yeah. forklift the whole uh, CCNA exam process. You used to have to take two exams. Now you only have to do one. It made so many people angry. I mean, yeah. it was it's cert apocalypse. Uh, yeah. Now, the, the rumor is that Cisco is getting ready to review the CCNA again, whether or not it's time to renew it. You know, um, a lot of certifications kind of renew on this three-year cycle, and it's been about three years. Do you think Cisco is getting ready to redo the CCNA again? This is not a hill I'm going to die on, and so I don't want to assert this out. It's like <laughs> I don't want to get phone calls to be like, Joe, you were wrong, right? Like yeah. This is completely my two cents and the smallest grain of salt, but no, I don't think so. I think um, – one reason being COVID and, re and and their internal workforce recovering from that. I think that's going to yeah. be an unspoken thing that doesn't get talk talked about, of course, or the company's never going to admit a weakness, but it certainly has impacted them. To what degree? I have no idea. I'm just assuming by the natural laws of nature that there was some negative impact there, and that's going to push them behind to some degree. I think I think we saw that across a lot of certification organizations yeah. where every, the, our, the progress, like, you know, during COVID, I think technologically and, you know, IT wise, we made some incredible bounds that we would never have made it without COVID. But also, I think we were held back a little bit because of it, just because some development wasn't happening on some of these important new technologies. Yeah. And I would love to, and I wish I could go to Cisco Live with you because I would love for you to ask around about this. But I saw people who attended Cisco Live last year, and it seemed there were some whispers about. Cisco might be trying to change approach and not have these megalithic changes. They want to have small iterative changes. So I, I and that just makes more business sense to me. So I think that's the it's like the two, that's the two things, right? You, yeah. you have this kind of kind of seatbelt, if you will, from COVID, and then you have I think you know they have some strategic decisions that are good about just let's be iterative. Let's just change the thing in iterations where our, because they're propped up. It's, it's a, it's a very symbiotic relationship, right? They're propped up very right. much by third party markets and vice versa. And I think that they really are like, listen, we like, we're kind of, you know, robbing Peter to pay Paul here when we're, when we're making these huge changes. So I, that's, that's my gut. My gut is we're going to see slow iterative changes over time. Maybe maybe more frequent. Maybe we get a change every six months or every year. But they're they're just manageable. That's my guess. Yeah. 
Absolutely. So now I, I, I got another question for you. Um, as someone who, you know, does on, you know, runs an online e-learning platform, um, there's tons of different ways to study for IT certifications out there. I yeah. Mean, just tons of them. What are some of the most successful ways you've seen other than signing up for alpha prep right now? <laughs> um, cheesy plug. I didn't of, do the cheesy exactly. plug. That's great. <laughs> I, I had to throw it in there. Links down in the description. Yeah. Um, but anyways, what is some of the best study methods that you have seen out there that you can suggest to people to really be successful when absorbing this material? So this is the bad, and I have to give all credit to Kevin Wallace, shout out if you're listening to this, but I did his CCNA course a long time ago. And one of the things he talked about in it was falling in love uh, with the material. I think Wendell Odom talks about this too. Um, but I, I, that is step one. I mean, just, yep. just fall in love with the material first. Like, you know, draw, get up in the morning, draw subnets, draw draw architectural maps of, of, a, of a network layout draw just have fun with it make you know do if you have if you have kids make make songs to help you remember things and turn them into nerds too like make it a lifestyle number just fall in love with it that that is the, the absolutely the most effective thing it's like when, you know when we learn language it's, it's like you know when adults they try to learn a new language and they never do and it's like why and we always say well it's easier to learn it as a kid because we think kids are smarter no that kids fall in <laughs> love with a language kids have kids songs kids watch sesame street kids you know they head and shoulders knees and toes right so apply <laughs> be a kid be a kid with 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 networking be a kid with whatever it is and, and really embrace that and, and ask yourself how else can i be a kid about this how else can i fall in love and really just put it in your heart that's step one if you do that if you can manage to do that you, you're gonna you're gonna fly like an eagle you just the rest the rest will come into place and we can talk about those strategies but that's like in me that is the number one foundation is fall in love with it you know um, right. step, step two is is once you get to a point teach it you know um yep. track it pacer was was talking about it i think she she was doing twitch streaming while she was studying yeah she, she was doing twi twitch streaming and i'm i'm a big believer that uh, the best way to learn something is to teach it yeah absolutely and that's like and that's part of that falling in love right because it's like this is something now it's a part of my lifestyle like oh i have this obligation to this audience of people so maybe maybe you're not a twitch streamer maybe you're an introvert like oh what a shocker some tech nerds an introvert right <laughs> um so maybe you you have a girlfriend or a daughter or a mom or a dad and you you teach them you sit them and you're like all right sit here and be boring you're, i'm going to teach you subnetting like that because you know you're gonna you're no one's excited to learn yeah. subnetting for the first time that's for sure right so yeah, teaching is isn't the next huge step. Is figure out how to how to how to teach, um, for sure. What do you what do you think? Is, what do you think are the best strategies? You know, um, other than you know teaching, um, I think labbing labbing is mm -hmm. huge. Um, you know, actually practicing the things you learn, especially when it comes to like the Cisco certifications. Yes. I um, I think it's Juwan Lightfoot, a fellow YouTuber. You know, he he come up with the saying lab every day um and that really kind of describes it the best way whether you're buying equipment and building a physical lab or if you're doing a virtual lab just practicing the skills you're learning real really helps cement them into your brain i feel um and i think goes beyond like networking certification so that can be cybersecurity, um the cloud whatever i think any certification worth doing is worth building a lab and actually practicing your skills and also, it's a good way to stay fresh on your skills too. Um, I always have some project or I'm tinkering on right now, you know, with, um, you know, whether it's building uh, virtual machines on my uh, NAS or I yeah. just got a new single board computer. I'm going to build into a, a home assistant type of server and just uh, doing stuff like that. I think is a good way to keep those skills sharp and to constantly be learning new skills. Yeah, I think so too. And I, I, one of the things, especially with like the networking stuff or any lab, just for folks that are listening, go, go to, you know, um, you know, virtual stuff is great. Packet tracer is great. It's cool in a yep. pinch, but nothing in my opinion, I, I, I mean, I'd go to bat for this any day of the week. I, I think you're just wrong. If you're like, all you need is, is packet you know, virtual stuff. You're just wrong. You're just missing out on that whole love thing, right? You're just, you're, you're wrong. Yeah. Um, so yeah, go, go to like a free geek, go to like, there's a lot of like PC graveyard places. You can get old stuff dirt cheap, you know? So yep. just that, just do that. Yeah, no. And I, I a hundred percent agree with you. Um, you know, a, a 
an emulator can't emulate the the sensation you get when you're clicking in that ethernet cable into mm-hmm. that port yeah um and there's certain troubleshooting that you're going to learn how to do by actually having a physical machine there in front of you you know yeah. whether it's just a bad cable or stuff like that you know yeah I, yeah i'm i'm a big believer i've i've created entire videos on like gear you should look for and get um I, I and I think most training platforms even recommend getting if you can afford it, get some physical gear. You don't have to spend an arm and a leg. At most, I, you shouldn't. I don't think you should need to spend more than a hundred bucks for a yeah. CCNA lab. Yeah, you know, you don't need the brand new stuff. Buy used eBay um, anywhere online. Yep. I, I tend to say stay away from the pre-built labs because um, a lot of times those are like someone who's sourced all the things, put them all together, and then charge the premium for them. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know. Shout out to those rich kids. If you're a rich kid, you can do that. If you're a rich kid, you can do that. I mean, yeah, absolutely. (laughs) If it's someone else's money, sure, why not? If the company's buying it. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, I was just – no, I just agree, you know. And uh, another good way is when you're doing labs is if you've got a study partner. That's huge too because you can mess with them. You know, put a crossover cable where it's not supposed to be and don't say anything and just keep, you know, um, that kind of stuff. Just just have fun. Just get in there and have fun. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. Now, I actually got some questions here from the community I want to ask you. Um, one of the first one questions is, do you recommend going through labs after completing all the course material or doing suggested, or do you suggest going through the labs while you're going through the course material? We were just kind of talking about this. Yeah, absolutely, during um, and, and after, right? It's a, the after is yeah. a no-brainer, right? Because you should, you should be in that mindset if you haven't had a mentor already tell you it's, it's, you're constantly learning. This is, this is expect, Don't forget you're competing against, you know, AI, Alexa's coming for you. Yeah. So you always have to keep learning. But while you're studying, you absolutely want to be jumping into labs to reinforce that, right? So, you know, you read, read a chapter in your book reading, um, you know, take a bunch of practice, practice questions on alpha prep. Uh, <laughs> and, and then and then do your labs, you know, and just get in there and, and go to town on them because it, it does. It reinforces that. It gives you a real world concept. And um you just if you just skip over it, you're gonna you're gonna miss it and and you're gonna regret it. You have to do it as you go. I, and that's I I can't see a, a way other than doing it as you go. I I agree one hundred percent. Next question here: Do you think the CCNA is starting to lose its value in twenty twenty three? Absolutely not. Uh, I think it's you know like I said, it's one of these fields that's going to start to increase and expand as um, other other fields get cannibalized. You know. We, if we look at uh, workforce participation since I think the 90s, it's been doing a dip, right? You, that's Bureau of Labor and Statistics. You can just pull that up. And a lot of those fields are, are just ones that could be easily automated. Almost all of them are, right? It's like, you know, basic content or uh, phone operators, that kind of stuff, right? Those, those, those type of things are in rapid decline. Um, and like we mentioned earlier, having a nuanced certification like a, uh, like a CCNA or any, any of the tech cert- certifications uh, insulates against you, against that. And not only that, everyone else is shoving into that market. So this is like, you know, this is the time to get into it. The, mar- the value is going up and up for it without it's, a doubt. It's time to, time, time to double down. Yes, right? yes. Now is the time to double down. Yeah, the count is good. The count is good. <laughs> um. My next question uh, from the community is uh, Red Hat caught my attention, but I don't know anything about it except it's a Linux distribution. Mm-hmm. What can I expect career wise if I put some time and energy into it? Um, I am not an expert. Um, that's one of those um, disciplines that at, at Alpha Prep that I am not an expert in that vertical. However, I will say with certainty that it's much more specific, it's much more nuanced. So you can expect to be in a more competitive, maybe higher reward, but much, very much so um, higher competition. I, so I would recommend, like again, starting with that CCNA, and then if that's where your discipline wants to take you, you've got that hedge against your bets, right? Because you're gonna I, you're gonna be going into a more competitive marketplace, um, in my opinion. It's just it's kind of like, you know, you know, obviously Linux, if you know, is everywhere. Um, yeah. It really World is. Runs on Linux. It, it does, yeah. Um, but it's just, I, I think it's kind of, I just think it's more, it's less mainstream, but it's very valuable. So I, um, if if you have that mindset, go for it. You're going to do well. But yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with it. Nice. Well, as we start coming here to the end, 
do you have any other advice you recommend for people that are either just getting into the field or looking to kind of take advance their career to that next level? Um, yeah, you know, it's kind of funny. There's like, there's all the cliche advice, right? Like work hard, be persistent, study hard, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and no one ever talked, I, 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 this is generally like, if you think back and I, you know, to a job you've had or success you've had climbing up the ladder, I can almost guarantee you it had much less to do with what you knew and much more to do with how you articulated it, how you articulated your skill, how you, how you could right. inform people and communicate with them about what you could or could not do or what we should or should not do. So my so the soft skills. Yeah, my number one advice is being being articulate. I think it's the most powerful thing any one person can do. And we live in a culture where, unfortunately, especially for, I, I think, young males and, and, and females too, there's this, you know, subset of culture that just encourages, you know, having a poor vernacular and it's not cool to be able to, to, to have, you know, profound meeting and <laughs> conversations it's, and being an intellectual is overrated. Um, I think you should you should run away from that like crazy because if you can't bring to life what's in your brain with words in a very crafted manner you're going to be very hard pressed to climb the ladder because you can't even exp you don't even know yourself right you can't even explain yourself right. in words um, this is the most important skill more, more than more than the CCNA cert more than any of that is you know um, this is part of why there's a strong correlation between um, you know, reading and writing literature and, and, and having a high, having a high vocabulary is, is it, it, it forces you in that kind of environment. And so, yeah, just be literate. That's it. And, and work on it. <laughs> um, do the stop and pause method, you know, think before you say something, um, take, take classes on how to articulate yourself that, that will serve you so well in the future. It'll serve you more than you could imagine. You know, I, I, I 100 percent agree with that. I'm, I'm a super strong believer is, you know, when I'm looking to hire someone, uh, you know, I, I care more about their their soft skills, their ability to communicate and talk to people than actual the hard skills they know. I mean, I still care about the, you know, the, they know enough skills to get by on the job. But yeah, I think it's way more important that they're a good team player that they can communicate well with non-technical people because I can teach all those hard skills all day long. The soft skills, you know, the, the being a people person, learning how to artic articulate things in a manner that makes people feel that you understand and can relate with them. That I can't teach those skills. You know, those yep. skills are, you have to learn them on your own. So I think those, those skills are some of the most important skills that most employers, I think, look for when you're starting out in the field. I think so. And I, I think, I mean, you can even, I can imagine if you've had a promotion before, I'm sure you have, because you're an yeah. articulate person. I, I bet you, if I asked you, you would say it was a, in large part with how you were communicated. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, that's, and, and people really underestimate it. It's like, yeah, I, I, you know, you're, you're the bearded IT dad, you, you, you know, tech, <laughs> you know, tech, but that's not what got you there. That's not what got you to, to the level of success you're at now. It was communication. Right. So people just Absolutely. don't forget, do not forget that. Do not forget that. No, and two of my biggest jobs have the my hiring manager, the person who hired me, literally both twice in a row told me you weren't the most qualified candidate here. We had people with you know um, master's degrees that were really pissed off that they didn't get the job, <laughs> but we hired you because we could tell you would be a good fit with the team. You communicated well, and that was the most important thing we wanted. So yeah, absolutely. Communication skills, they go so far in this field. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. I, I agree. Now, if, now if people want to connect with you, learn more about alpha prep and stuff, where can people find that? The absolute best way is support at alpha prep.net. It's just our general email address. That is the best way to get a hold of me in the fastest manner. You can, you can hit me up on Twitter. It's just, uh, sorry at uh, LinkedIn. It's Joe Franzen. I think I'm, uh, we also have a, a Twitter channel for our, <clears throat> for alpha prep as well. I think. Yep. So you can check us out there too. Um, but yeah, email, email us. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to chat with you. Um, 
you can also go check out our free question we have free question exam on alphaprep.net you can kind of browse around um, we have them for each one of the exams and it'll give you give you a free 50 question exam so well, that's super cool yeah well i really appreciate that and we'll make sure and put links to all that information down in the description or in the show notes depending on where you're watching or listening to this too Thank you so much for taking the time and uh, coming on the show and just sharing so much great knowledge with the audience. Thank you very, very, very much for having me. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. I, all, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and until next time, keep learning.